Hello and welcome to another edition of Theorycraft, hosted by your truly Ben and Jack. We are two dudes that like to nerd out and rant and rave about various topics, whether it be comic books, sci-fi, or just sheer randomness. This week, we want to do a deep dive into the possibilities that DC has for their TV shows as well as movies, because for the past, well, almost a century now that DC's been around, We've seen a majority of movies that's been Batman-based and Superman-based and a little here and there of other things which have obviously failed, which, for whatever reason, DC's deterred from doing more until recently. So that's pretty much it for this week. We are just sort of having a gander at what the possible future is for DC as they are trying to create their own little universe compared to Marvel's, which is ever, ever, ever growing. And yeah, and hopefully getting out of Batman and Superman. Oh god, but, yes. But although with the latest announcement for Batman, doesn't look like that's going to be going away anytime soon. Because yes, Ben Affleck is returning to reprise his role. Yes, to a degree, but it's more of a cameo role because he's going to appear in the Flashpoint movie, which. I'm a bit hesitant now that I've heard that we've got obviously Michael Keaton coming back for his Batman role. I don't know if it's actually going to be a Flash movie or whether it's just going to be looking down the history of DC, which has been mostly Batman and Superman themed. Yeah, well, that yeah, except that's going to comp that's already complicated the heck out of me. So if you've got Michael Keaton coming back, but yet you've also got Ben Affleck and you've got Robert Pattinson as well. Where does this all fit in? well? So the thing is, this is the first tangent. This is what we love to do here. We go on tangents. I've been watching the CW show since they all started. And up until, well, the very last season, we had Crisis on Infinite Earths, where basically yeah. the multiverse of DC, to a degree, sort of collapsed and then regrew into something new. So Michael Keaton's universe was dubbed Earth 89 because, of course, it was set in the 80s obviously so there we go so then i'm trying to comprehend the rest of the logic as well because the whole point of dc and their multiverse is that there's supposed to be only 52 variations of the earths but somehow in cw land they just end up giving random dua numeric sort of places for each different earth so it means that we got random things like the Earth 616, which is the Lucifer TV series, because, of course, Lucifer is actually a DC property, which is actually under something, I think it's called Dark Horse Comics or something along those lines. But something. basically, Lucifer Morningstar is a DC character, to a degree, which I get, but at the same point, it just added way too much complications for the whole multiverse story that we had for the CW. Yeah. But the thing is, as well, is like, there are. So we got all the CW shows to a degree are now listed under as Earth Prime. But then we got the Justice League movie, which has got like Jason Lamoa, Gal Gadot, Henry Cavill, and all those bits and bobs in between. Yeah. As Earth One. <clears throat> right. Okay. That I can sort of work with that. And then we also also got the Stargirl series, which has become Earth 2, which actually looks like the Earth 2 comics, which I'm kind of glad of. And then everything else seems to have just sort of plumped into place, and that was about it. But the thing is, is like we have at least three films or TVs where we got two films and a TV series confirmed by DC to a degree, yeah. but there's not been much in the way of progress because obviously what's been going on in the world this year. So the first thing that I think we should go over is the possibility of Black Adam. Now, obviously, everyone knows it's going to be Dwayne The Rock Johnson playing as Black Adam because... Yeah, we got Dwayne The Rock Johnson is going to play Black Adam, which... There's nobody else who can play him. Like, no, there's no one not. else that could play him. But I am curious to a degree as to how it's going to fit in within the rest of the continuity of the Justice League movies, because, of course, it's set within that universe. Yeah. Because 
from what I remember in Man of Steel, they made it out like they'd never met anybody like Superman ever before. That's why the government was so hesitant against him in the first place. Right. Which would work. But then you have like the fact that there is obviously Black Adam, who to a degree is like the early on incantation of Superman as a magic counterpart, set back in ancient Egypt, and he's le- he's immortal. He has his own secret nation of conduct, which is patrolled <laughs> by him. So yeah. it's not a, so like unless well, I mean it is the American government, so I can give it like a bit of leeway with their stupidity but my point being is that if they're this hesitant towards a guy that's trying to protect them what the hell are they going to do with a guy like black adam that's going to screw them left right and center oh yeah of course (laughs) i mean the thing is as well is black adam isn't a full-on bad guy he's more of an anti-hero which I can kind of see working, but then the main point to Black Adam is that he is basically a very... I'm trying to find the right wording for this, but a very strong and very... very unwavering character in terms of how he operates things. And the fact that he's literally the arch enemy of Shazam, I am curious as to how they're going to work in Shazam, because obviously they're the same powers, they gain the same abilities, but they have two different ways in which they work. Like With the Shazam movie, it was a very kid's movie, it was very kiddish, it was very immature, but then they did have some moments of seriousness. So when obviously these two characters are going to end up crossing blows, whenever that will be, it's going to be hard to try and use both tones because obviously Black Adam's not going to be a comical version of it, so it's going to be deadly serious, but then you can't have Shazam be deadly serious because it's a kid inside an adult's body that's got all these abilities. This is going to be tough. (laughs) Isn't it always? (laughs) But the thing is as well is like, I don't know whether they're going to go through the concept of it being like flashbacks at the beginning, showing him gaining his abilities and going from there and perhaps have like the vibe of gods of Egypt, where obviously you got the pinnacle war between all the different Egyptian gods. And then obviously that's the general, just the movie or whether it is just going to focus briefly on his backstory and just show his progression as a tyrannical leader of conduct. And go from there. I, like yeah, I say, he. Sorry. Yeah, just like all we've just all we've had from Black Adam is just that I. I remember I sent it. To you, I sent it to your messenger. We had like that very short teaser where we basically saw nothing except lots of very big font. But oh. except I will say this, and probably a lot of people are going to be like, "What? How can you do this kind of?" Check? I'm sorry, but I didn't actually know of Black Adam until it was announced. If I'm honest. See, and it, I already saw the Shazam like trailer. I know the film's been out, but I saw the Shazam trailer and I was like, "This isn't what I want to watch." Just like, just I know, obviously, we have a bit of goofiness every now and again in films, but I just was not interested in watching that. I was just like, "What is this crap?" But then, obviously, we had Doom Patrol, and it turns out I absolutely friggin' love it because it's just absolutely back. It's just absolutely crazy. Sorry. It is absolutely bonkers. <laughs> Uh, bonkers just ain't even the word. It's in a different <laughs> realm of its own. <laughs> it is. But this is the thing, folks, is that Jack is slowly sort of leaning into the more DC side of things because he's yeah. been a Marvel boy since day one. Oh, I've yeah. been wavering between the two over the years, but me and Jack can both agree on the fact that DC have all the potential to do so many different movies and yet they've always done Batman, Superman, Batman, Superman, well, to the point where it just didn't... I don't see why. Yeah, well, it's just, like, obviously, I've, I've said to you, it's just like, yeah, like, Marvel has... the advantage. Marvel knows how to write really good stories. Like, give them that. They know how to write a good story. But whereas, like, with um, characters and so on, you have lots and lots of variety in DC. And mm-hmm. yet, we've probably only seen maybe 5% 
of the like the total characters there's so much potential for all these really cool characters that mm-hmm. i've found and yeah. discovered that they just it's just when they seem like they don't have any ideas they just go back to default mode which is batman superman pretty much i mean the thing is is like luckily with both shazam and wonder woman they have slowly adjusted the curve on the concept of what DZ has to offer but the thing is as well i wonder if the main reason why they don't steer off it is because anytime they have steered off the like variant of batman and superman it's gone to absolute fudge because if we take a look at the history obviously we've looked at uh, green lantern movie great premise for a film like it was a great concept but, but there are so self, yeah that yeah look how that went. <laughs> but that's my point is the fact that DC go oh we we screwed up here we won't try again. It just sounds a bit pessimistic when there are so much potential for what's going on. I mean yeah of course. Obviously now we are going to have the inevitable Green Lantern series that comes out next year, which I am so looking forward to i've got I, such i have high hopes for this i hope it does well i pray it does so do i but the thing is i said to you they had a very weird choice for Hal jordan i'd have never yeah. have picked this guy james marston so for those of you who may not know it's obviously the guy that played I as <laughs> yeah well obviously you know but <laughs> This was the guy that played Cyclops during the 90s X-Men series, but he also, his latest role was in Sonic the Hedgehog as the police officer that found Sonic. Yes. And yes, it's a very goofy movie, but it does show that it's not down to the actor, it's down to the writers for the actual movie uh, itself. Yeah, that wasn't the poor guy's fault. He, and just, he was written to be such a bland character. Oh, God, it was just... Cyclops, I find, is a very difficult character to do regardless, to be fair, because he's not... I hate to say it, but he's not got much in the way of bollocks. Like, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, when it true. comes down to it, like the, I think the only notable thing that he's known for is that he's actually the dad to Cable, and that's about it. Like, other than yeah. that, he's got two brothers that are more powerful than him and actually have more stability with their powers, because they all have the same power... Just different ways of like manipulating yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it took one knock to the head, and Scott can't control his power. Yet you got the other two that are literally ripping the world apart. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I mean, like I say, we got Green Lantern has been confirmed. We've also got confirmed as who's going to be playing as Sinestro. Now, I am curious as to how the makeup's going to be done for him, but it's going to be, supposedly, the rumour is Michael Kenneth Williams is going to be Sinestro. Now, let me get the screen up so you can yeah. have a better look, because it's easier to do it that way than anything else. Yeah, so maybe we can also have a look at the... So, obviously, we've got the... Ah, yeah. 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 So, oh, obviously, oh, okay. we got the Sinestro on the right is the one that we got from the original Green Lantern movie, and... I am curious to know whether his makeup's going to be actual makeup or whether it's going to be CGI'd. Because, I, I, I mean, this is a TV series, don't forget, that they're doing. So while it is going to be HBO, it's still going to be a bit strapped in cash in terms of CGI. Yeah, of course. Yeah, because like I don't think they want to like push like that amount of money into a series like this within the first series because if it's an absolute bomb that's mm-hmm. all that money down the drain that they could use for the later se- for the later um seasons exactly i mean i they said that there's supposed to be four green lanterns of earth there's meant to be obviously how Hal, Hal jordan and then i don't know which of the other ones they will bring in because there's at least six different Green Lanterns for Earth alone, and only one of them's actually female. Now, I can guarantee with the way that they do things now on TV, they have to exploit the whole diversity thing, so obviously Jessica Cruz would have to fit in somehow. But her story is such a confusing mess that I don't know how it's going to work in terms of TV, if at all. It's just hard. It's, that's difficult to get behind. 
Yeah. But, I mean, what else have we got that's confirmed? We have Green Lantern. Now, the other thing that was, well, it was listed on IMDb back in 2018. So it's only about two years ago, give or take. And they haven't done much since. They've only just have it listed. But I would yeah. love to see more work done on Booster Gold. And Jack is probably thinking, who the hell is Booster Gold? So Booster uh, Gold... Yeah, that's just flown straight over my head. <laughs> Booster Gold is basically a guy from the future who was a race car driver, gets in a serious accident, so he's not able to race again. He comes from the 25th century. So by that point, obviously, the majority of the world is in sort of very technical, technologically advanced, and they praise all the superheroes from the 21st century, which is obviously modern day. Right. So to try and redeem himself, to try and actually make a name for himself, he ends up stealing a load of different tech that's in the museum that he works at as a curator and decides to go back in time to the 21st century and become a superhero known as Booster Gold. Because he's from the future, he's able to know when, where and how things are happening, because obviously he's from the future. But in doing so, he ends up making things worse instead of better, because when he thinks he saved the day, he's ended up butterflying effect the whole other timeline shenanigans and creates things worse than better. Yeah. But the really cool thing is people don't realise that the character Rip Hunter, who was in Legends of Tomorrow for seasons one and two, is actually the son of Booster Gold. Now, I don't know who his mum is, but the thing is Booster Gold doesn't know he's he, that's his son but Rip Hunter basically goes through back in time because of his dad's mi misguidedness. So majority of Rip Hunter's stories centre around Booster Gold mucking up the timeline. So whether or not they would bring back Arthur Darville, who also played uh, Rory in Doctor Who, I don't know if they would bring him back as Rip Hunter or whether or not they just skim over that whole concept entirely. Because time travel as a whole, no matter how Americans write it, it always gets very, very confusing. Yeah, unless yeah, unless you have to try and simplify it by, uh, in, by Infinity War, Endgame standards, where there is actually a set of rules that you have to follow. Yeah, it's still mm. not going to make sense, but at least there's a set of rules that you can follow, but... True. It just seems that whenever we have any kind of time travel film, like no matter what the film title is, that just seems to, it just breaks its own rules constantly. And oh yeah. It always seems, it's the constant mistake that you go, oh yeah, excited for the plot of time travel, but yeah, it never, it never goes well just because it keeps breaking its own rules. Exactly. But the other thing as well is obviously trying to cast somebody as Booster Gold, you need someone that's pretty arrogant, someone that's pretty all about himself, pretty egotistical, and the only person that I know that would work well enough to be Booster Gold would be Nathan Fillion, who also played as Castle, but also was in Firefly. Now, obviously, people will probably disagree with me, but the whole point of Booster Gold is that he is a cocky superhero. Like he doesn't really know what he's doing. He's just got a bit of showmanship. He's trying to show up everybody, pretty much like Nathan Fillion does, no matter what role he plays. Yeah. And uh, I don't really think I can think of anybody else that's just as cocky. But swiftly moving on, let's have a look. So we've done Green Lantern, we've done Booster Gold, and we've obviously talked about Black Adam. But there have been talks along the way of a character film based on someone called Adam Strange. Now, uh, yes, Adam Strange is sort of DC's equivalent to Flash Gordon in terms of the the both Earth men who wound up miraculously teleported to another world and end up being the superhero or sort of heroic character that frees the planet. Ironically, of course, is that Flash Gordon is the first ever comic book series ever. He predates Superman by four years. But the thing is, with Adam Strange, is that his first comic was back in 1958, where it was all about the space race. 
So obviously his costume yes. of sorts was a bit of a sci-fi wonder. Let me see if I can find yeah, put up a nice image. Let's have yeah, a look. Because obviously back obviously back then you had like this you had the Soviets and the USA that were fighting for the race to So yeah, obviously back then was the Soviet and America's space race, which I don't know whether it'd be worth having that concept again or whether we would have it as just it's a random scientist that gets plucked from Earth and ends up on Zorana. Oh, not Zorana. Is it Zorana? No, Ron, sorry. So there we go. So that's what Ste uh, Adam Strange, I nearly said Stephen Strange. Adam Strange originally looked like this. So it was, cool, yeah. it was an interesting sort of time where obviously... Let me zoom in a bit more. So you can tell, like, it's the whole 1950 styling of the... F well, I don't understand. For a man that's got a jetpack, why does he have a dorsal fin on his head? <laughs> Wait like, a um, does he have a... Does he have, oh, he does have a dorsal fin. I couldn't yeah, see that at first. Yeah, for some bizarre reason, though, I don't understand the style choice for this. Why does he have a... Finn, was he going to go and speak to Flipper or was he going to go hunt down Jaws? <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, the thing is with Adam Strange is that although he was teleported to Ron, the Zeta Beam tube technology had a bit of a technical hitch where he could only be teleported to that planet for so long before the energy of the teleportation wore off and he got zapped back to earth and he'd always end up in a random place so he'd have to chase down another zeta beam from ron to earth to try and get back to where he was yeah which is an interesting plot point but again it's trying to make it work within a movie i don't know if it could work because obviously it's trying to I don't know how you could add it in. That's a that is a tough one. It would work better as a TV series because then you could end up with it being that he'd have to he'd only have so long per episode wherever he was and had to it could almost be like a mission impossible type vibe where they only have a set time limit to save the day and yeah. that's why he ends up like randomly teleporting here and there between each episode. Right, I see. But when if it's a movie, it kind of gets a bit boring when you've got a guy that keeps randomly disappearing back and forth between planets. It's like, oh, just give it a goddamn rest. Just pick that, a planet. That's going to take some explaining. <laughs> exactly. But obviously, like there are other variations of the costume, which I kind of prefer. So this is the Young Justice TV series of... Adam Strange. So it looks a little less clunky. He's actually got a cloak instead of it being just a suit, like a sort of space suit. So at least it makes it a bit more modernised than compared to the original idea. But the thing is, I was trying to rack my brains around on who could cast him because if I can show you how he's meant to look within Young Justice without the suit... Uh, there we go. So that's why I accidentally showed you earlier. So obviously the blonde guy is Adam Strange. And the only person I could think of that closely sort of fit next to him was obviously the guy that played as Havoc, but also played as the latest version of MacGyver, which is, let me find him, this guy. Yes, yeah, yeah. So you can sort of see where I'm coming from. I mean, the thing is, because, of course, he has been MacGyver, I would also argue it would kind of work as a MacGyver vibe for whether it be a movie or a TV series where he'd have to try and make do with what he's got to try and do what he needs to do. Yeah. But then, obviously, like I say, it's it's very time-limit-based as well, being the fact that he's been zapping in between Earth and Ran. But I don't know, like it's a very hard character trying to fit in with the rest of the DC universe because obviously his shenanigans zipping between two different planets at random moments. Well, I think regardless, like at the same point, 
it's at a time where like we've had Batman Superman done to death. So it's a time where we can introduce lesser known characters. And mm-hmm. even there were some interesting ones, which uh, you sent to me and which I found myself, which are super interesting. So um, like a few other ones, like a few things such as uh, plastic, like plastic man, John, yeah. Const- John Constantine, which I know has been done already, but then obviously that got, uh, canned, but then we got Doc. Then we got Doctor Fate, Deathstroke, stuff like that. Yeah, I am just into seeing. I'm more into like the villains and that sort of thing. But like, what kind of like different series or maybe films would you like to see that have not been done as of yet or not been announced? Well, speaking of villains, there has been. <sighs> It hasn't been announced, but it's been hinted at for the past couple of years. A character that everybody loves because obviously he is just such a bizarre character, but he is known as Lobo. Ah, uh, yeah, I was researching him yesterday. Yeah, so it's basically it's kind of like DC's equivalent to Wolverine, but to a more drastic sort of variation of it because he's an alien. He's an alien. I don't know if he's the only one of his race. He is a bounty hunter who just goes from planet to planet, pulverizing the living gubbins out of people. And I say gubbins because it's the only word I can get away with. And his regeneration ability is so strong that if there's only one drop of blood left of him, he can regrow his body within like two hours. Wow. Yeah, exactly. But... I will always remember Lobo from the animated Superman series because it was just so stupid the way his <laughs> hair was. It looked like a punk rocker that was just a bit lost. I like Wolverine syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> hair that defies gravity. Yes. But the thing is, I'm trying to figure out who could actually play Lobo. And I, I know it would be such a stupid thing to think, but... As like a weird like twist on logic, I think Hugh Jackman coming back as like anybody sci-fi. It be because okay. the thing is, well, the yeah. thing is with Lobo is that he is very similar to Wolverine with respect that he does smoke cigars as well. So obviously, it would just be that all you'd have to do is make sure that you paint the entire body of Lobo, whoever it is that plays him, white and give him the blackish and reddish eyes. He was briefly in the Krypton series that I could never get my head around because it made things ten times harder than it had to be for the whole mythos of Superman. Basically, it shouldn't have been done. Yeah. I mean, I was looking forward to the whole concept of like the back history of Krypton, and then it just ended up shoehorning the fact that, oh yeah, this is Superman's grandfather. He has to survive because otherwise there's no Superman. If there's no Superman, the world dies. Why couldn't you just keep it to the whole concept of what the back history of Krypton is? Because DC have to piss about. (laughs) Pretty much, pretty much. But, I mean... Although, I reckon reckon for Lobo, a really good act who is a legitimate... Like, who is a legitimate cool guy to play as well, and pretty serious as well... Uh, it would have to be Jeffrey Dean Morgan from The Walking Dead or Negan, as some of you guys might know. Yeah, no, I could see that to a degree. I uh, thing is, is like I say, is like we got all these if, buts, and maybes with DC, but the problem is, is due to the chaotic world that we have this year, everything's grounded to a halt, so we've all had to speculate as best we could. There's supposed to be trailers coming out within the next couple days from DC Fandome to showcase all the stuff that's coming out. But at the same point, I'm not holding my breath because obviously nobody's been able to film that much. So we're only going to get a very small, very small piece of cake. I reckon we're going to have to wait to at least 2022 or 2023, I think, to be honest, to get some real like to get some real bangers out. I just, it's just because they're going to have to, obviously, because a lot of filming has been grounded to a halt. So I think the rest of, I think it's like filming for all these different kind of things that have been announced are going to have to go right the way through to possibly the end of 2021, I think. Yeah, no, I completely agree, dude. I mean, the problem is, is 
I think DC haven't really had much of a decent chance to plan of what they actually intend to do with their universe. They sort of made new movies time and time again just to make money, and that's about it. Like, DC haven't really thought much in depth in terms of what they actually wanted to make a universe out of, unlike Marvel, where, although to a degree not everything was planned perfectly, they did at least have some sort of concept of what was going to happen down the line. Yeah. Despite the fact that they didn't have 100% of their characters, they still managed to make a decent load of movies that was cohesive enough within 10 years. Yeah, and yet... you, you have such a back catalogue of really good DC characters, mm. which just nothing's been done with them at all, no. apart from comics, and that's it. But no, this want, is it. Like, that's why I said to you, I would really love to see like a Plastic Man film. Yes. Now, I was thinking earlier today of who to actually have him cast by because the thing is with Plastic Man <laughs> is that he's not a full on good guy. He's a very iffy character in terms of the fact that he was a crook but then he sort of tries to join Turngate and trying to become a good guy but it doesn't always pan out because he still has the intent to, well incentive of being a crook yeah so who was it I mentioned to you the other day because we made a list of people of who we wanted to Mike Myers yes now I'm sure a lot of you are thinking why Mike Myers I only mention him because he I, I, has, I was going to say, I can already, I can already hear people tapping away in the comments, going, "No." <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, people forget that Mike Myers is a very rubber-faced comedian because he has a very good range in terms of doing voices, which would come in handy for a guy that is literally a plastic man that is stretchy. Like the only other person, basically, they're, would... equi basically they're equivalent to Mister Fantastic in a way. Pretty much. But I had a thought today, if he hadn't have passed away, and I'm sure you're thinking it's an odd choice, but I would love to have seen Robin Williams. Oh, God. I would have, Because, yeah. like again, oh, it's another rubber face. I, I, I miss that guy. <laughs> Don't we all? But the thing is, he's just such a rubber face comedian that seemed to have been able to do voices so quick and so snappy depending on who he was playing. Like, Mrs. Doubtfire, for instance. Like, that was, like, there was no... I don't think he even rehearsed that much in terms of like changing up his voice. It was just literally there and then. Yeah, I think so. If you watch like a load of the footage uh, from like behind from like the behind the scenes and just like because like Robin Williams, he was one of those rare breeds of actors that could do any role. He could be like super funny and super serious. If you've seen uh, what's it called, Twenty Four Hour Photo, which is a proper disturbing film mm. and you go this is not robin williams this isn't the genie in aladdin what is this <laughs> <laughs> but this is it like plastic man i think would be such an interesting idea because again going back to marvel they proved the point that you don't have to have it based on a fully like superhero theme for a movie because ant-man was all about a heist movie in yeah. terms of like what the plot was that's very correct yeah so you could argue that Plastic Man could easily be used in terms of like a heist movie of sorts or something like some criminal-ish movie, but have him try to like recover from being the bad guy as well. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, like I say, there are so many potentials of what's going on. Supposedly, there is a new Gods movie in the works. Now. Jack is probably thinking, what am I on about? So, the funny thing is, New Gods and The Eternals, which is obviously a Marvel property, was both written by the same guy, Jack uh, Kirby. I, I know where you're going with this. So, I find it kind of ironic, if not a bit funny, that as soon as we've heard news about The Eternals coming out, that DC's gone around and gone, oh, we may as well do our godly-like characters that Jack <laughs> Kirby done. Like... I just find it really funny that it's taken DC nearly almost a hundred years for them to start delving into the rest of their universe. And I would love to see a new Gods movie because there are some very bizarre characters in it. My favourite one of all is Scott Free. I love the fact that he's called Scott Free. Like he, 
he chose that name himself because he was able to escape the most impossible of like contraptions from Granny Goodness, another weird name for a character. <laughs> but I just had a really random thought for Granny Goodness. If she's still around, if she's still around when this movie is being made, Betty White. Oh my god. <laughs> just because it would just be such a weird thing to have this like dotry old deer that looks so sweet and innocent kicking the living crap out of all these superheroes and stuff. Yeah, or if you wanna or if you want a badass, or if you want a badass good granny if she was still alive, Joan Rivers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 I can see where you're going with that. But it's just like the whole thing of the new gods is that they are incredibly weird characters and so yeah. obscure, but they haven't done much with them for years. The right. last time I saw them do much was that they were briefly in Justice League Action, which was a terrible series, and Justice League Animated and Unlimited. They were heavily used in that a lot, but uh, God, I just had a thought as well. Big Barda. Yes, I know, it's a weird name for a character. She's like this seven-foot muscular... Like, the, Did you ever see Futurama? Yeah. And, you know, there's like those um, like cave women that go, we want snoo snoo. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know That's I kind of what Big Barda is like, this big, <laughs> muscly woman, but she, she she doesn't speak like that. She actually can speak quite well. Uh, there was a WWE... No, uh no, it's a uh, female Thai boxer or something. Uh oh, what's her name? Um here we go. Right, I was right. Ronda Rousey. Oh, I could have guessed that easy, but yeah, I'll show I was trying to remember what the hell well, her name is, was. She is still in well, she is technically still under contract with WWE, but but the thing is, because she's quite a big and muscular woman, she would play Big Barda quite well. I mean, let me let me find a picture for Jack to sort of have a gander at what I mean, because he's probably thinking, what the fudge am I on about? And that. So there we go. That's Big Barda. Oh, oh my God. That's wicked. Yeah. So, that's really cool, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I need to educate educate Jack a lot more on DC stuff because there's like there's so many characters that the DC films and TV series are barely touched on, but there are quite a lot of female characters that are quite I wouldn't say powerful, but more very intimidating. Because the other thing as well is Big Barda was part of a team on Apocalypse who led the team known as the Female Furies. And they are brutal. Like they, they are so brutal that they cracked Superman's spine. I think at one time. They sound like a sound like a lot like the uh, like the Vikings, the Berserkers. Pretty much, to a degree. But the thing is, is like DC have they don't they have various versions of gods. Obviously, they got the Apocalypse and gods and the new gods. It's because the thing is, is with Darkseid, which they were supposed to be planning on using in Justice League at yeah, some point, yeah. is meant to be Darkseid is like the living embodiment of all evil in the universe. And that his, the body that you see is just what he chooses to use when he wants to interact with the universe. So he cannot die. But he is such a bizarre character. His main thing is that he's obsessed with finding something called the anti-life equation which is basically a mathematical equation to basically mind control the entire universe at once yeah and like it just like folks it sounds so simple but when ben first explained this to me months ago it turned out it's it sounds really simple but it really 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 isn't and no. it's actually it's 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 pretty it's pretty cool actually just like the amount that actually goes into this whole anti life equation is just unreal. Mm -hmm. But the thing I find very confusing is that we've had Steppenwolf within Justice League the movie, which just I don't understand why. Like I don't know why they had to bring in such a big, heavy. It was too big of a character for them to all deal with. 
and yet you'd only just met like half the characters. And then obviously, these... but it's just. I said to Jack that they did Justice League way too early. They should have done like the whole idea of the reign of the Superman and then, well, death of Superman and then the reign of Superman storyline before bringing him back. But instead they just went, oh, shoot, we need Superman. We'll bring him back. But he's slightly angry and then he's OK by the end of the movie. Like, it's just like, no, yeah, it's just no. Like... Oh, just that that film was just piss poor. I was so I remember when I'm watching it when it like I was so unhappy with that film. <laughs> I just for me personally, like I understand why DC were trying so hard to bring in Justice League because obviously the Avengers yeah, had worked so it, well. I get, yeah, I get it, I get it. And obviously like you know, oh our competitor more like Marvel's like beating us out. We need to, we need to bring in Justice League, which yeah cool idea on its own you got like obviously you got cyborg flash and so on but it just it was too much too soon Mm -hmm. for sure i mean the only thing that kind of worked was the the aquaman movie was so good after justice league like it was an amazing movie such a funny movie but such a good movie at the same time and I still find it really odd that, despite the fact that this is such a high-grade movie, the CGI for both Flash and Cyborg looks so clunky. Like it does, like, doesn't it? Well, the thing is with Cyborg is like he, the majority of his body is obviously cybernetics, but it's meant to be that it's just his torso and one of his arms and half his head and his legs. But in the Justice League movie, it made it look like the only thing that survived was his head. Yeah. But it looked like his head had been plonked onto um, Megatron's body from The Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, The Dark Dark of the Moon, sorry. Yeah, except if you go through like one of the comic panels, I forget the name of the comic, where he's had all of his cybernetics and everything taken off him, and he's literally just a torso and a head. That's it. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, as well, is like they completely skimmed over the whole fact that obviously his body is comprised of something f- called a mother box, which is something that is part of the new gods and dark side, which again is a p- potential plot point they could have added in at a later date. Instead, yes. they just went, Ooh, mother box. Zip, zip, zip. Oh, and he's got his body. Like, ugh, for goodness sake. Like, DC, if you're watching this, do us a favour, actually give people a better backstory before you shimmy them into the friggin' film. Like, for the love of fudge. Otherwise, how do you expect us to care? <laughs> well, the thing is, as well, is like, I understand they were trying to do a different style for the Flash's suit. They were trying to mimic the idea from Injustice, the video game, as well as the comic book. I, I get that. But... I get it, but. <laughs> But this thing is, as well, it looked like he just literally gone to a junkyard and just got random bits of scrap metal and hoped for the best. He even said in the movie that the suit itself was an amalgamation of bits and bobs from, like, space suits or something. Yeah. Which, like, he's a crime scene analyst. Where the hell does he get the time to find junkyard parts from a space suit? <laughs> uh, yeah, and just, like, out of all things in the world... Why would it have to be that? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, the thing I find that ever since the CW series, the Flash has seemed to have dumbed down so much in both TV and film to make it out like he's incapable of doing anything. Like, in the original comics, he made his own Flash ring, which was this concept where his suit could fold up into a small vacuum of space into a ring that could fit on his finger, and then he'd use his own powers to try and unleash the suit so he could change into it at any time it yeah. took the show six seasons for them to add that into the plot but it wasn't even him that made it the first time around it was someone else and it was just like for fudge sake like this is barry allen he is like one of the smartest men in all of dc to the point where bruce wayne even talks to him about cases because he struggles, so he likes to have a forensic scientist, is what Barry is, to actually... D- 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 yeah, but Sorry. Except, yeah, but except made Barry Allen look like a right pleb. Oh, it, <laughs> plebs, the like, least of the flipping worries. Like I could rattle around in my head better than this dude. Yeah, but, well, just like, I've been like trying to catch up, I've been trying to 
catch up on the Flash. I've still been watching bits and bobs, but I need to go straight from the beginning because I've been watching so I've been watching so much on the Flash ever since I saw Black Flash, which is friggin' cool. Mm. And just the concept of the Black Flash is just so it's just wicked. And anything to do with like kind of undead or like zombies, whatever, I love all that stuff. So yeah, I need to I need I got a lot of catching up to do before we yes. do another video on that. True, but then there's also DC's le latest story. I think you need to have a read called Deceased, which is all about zombies, and it uh, is so. Good. That's what it's called. It's literally called Deceased, but it is such a great story. Like what it is is basically Cyborg gets captured by Apocalypse, and he is basically being tortured because he's got the anti-life equation inside his suit because obviously it's a mother box. But something goes wrong through the torture device, so Cyborg is half dead. The anti-life equation gets corrupted, and anybody he comes into contact turns into a zombie. So the entire Earth oh turns gosh. into a zombie within seven days. Jesus! Oh, I know. It's, it's, that it's, is wicked. Yeah. Like, even Superman becomes a zombie, and so does the Flash. Oh the Flash God. turns into a zombie first, but the problem is, is like the only way they... they because the fact that the Flash is running so quick, he's making everyone else on the Earth a zombie as well, because he's so quick, he's spreading the virus. Yeah. So the only way to actually stop him is for Superman to literally stand in front of him and smash him to pieces. Yeah. But the problem is, is that part of Barry's bone shards gets stuck in Superman because he's running so fast, he's able to like run through Superman and hurt him. Yeah. But because his body's infected, it makes Superman into a zombie as well. So, to make sure that he doesn't pass it on to anyone else, he ends up flying himself into the sun and killing himself. Jeez, uh, <laughs> I know. punches with me here. I know, like, DC, I think, is probably your next thing to read up on, which we can do on my next topic. But, yeah, oh, I, I mean... I definitely, I definitely will. And just a very small little tidbit. Yeah, there's, like, it's obviously, like, you had the whole Marvel, like, sort of what if... Yeah, the whole like Marvel what if zombies thing, but there's also another one which is called uh, Ruins. Yeah, which basically Ruins is the concept. I'm not sure if it's the same concept as Deceased, but no, it's kind of a um, the concept of Ruins in Marvel, which was done in 90, either 95 or 96, is basically everything that can go wrong does go wrong. Yes, and you know, with what usually happened, like, I'll give everybody just a quick example and then we'll move on. But basically, when Bruce Banner gets hit by all the gamma rays and everything, obviously later on turns into the Hulk, that does happen. But instead, what actually happens is what would really happen to your body. You would end up developing things like cancer, tumors, stuff like that. You'd be dying. And that's what happens to the Hulk. And when the, he first hulks out, he's like this mass of tumors and like mm -hmm. bone growths. It's just... It's proper disturbing, but at the yeah. same time, really cool. <laughs> yeah, it's basically the worst possible outcome for every single character in Marvel. Yeah, I think, from what I remember with Iron Man, is that he builds a suit and it blows up on him within the first flight and he dies. Yeah, like everything that can go wrong does go wrong. Yeah. So basically, it's worst case scenario for everything. Pretty much. But, yeah, I mean, this has been... This week's episode, it's not been much as usual because obviously we're still waiting to hear anything at all going on. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for this week. So thanks again for joining us. Again, if you enjoy the content, please give us a like down below and any future topics you want us to talk about, pop them down in the comments below as well. And again, stay safe and we'll see you on soon. Later, yo! Now, obviously, everyone knows it's going to be Dwayne The Rock Johnson playing as Black Adam because... Oh. Sorry, I... what what the hell can I hear? Uh, uh, guys, I'm really sorry. My cat just decided to cough up a hairball as we speak, which is I was what you can hear in the background, so I do apologise for everybody. I was going to say, I thought I could hear up a cough up a hairball. Why do you have to do this now? Like, don't you realise I'm trying... Like, Daddy's trying to work here. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> oh, Joyce. This... Funny. I, oh, I do, because it means I get bloopers. <laughs>
just because like I'm trying to talk to you and listen, all I can hear is. <laughs> anyway, so 